The Library of Congress Packard Campus for Audiovisual Conservation in Culpeper, Virginia, preserves and provides access to the library's vast collection of films, television programs, radio broadcasts, and sound recordings. American History TV visited the Packard campus to learn about the earliest public affairs films, including U.S. presidents, the Spanish-American War, World War I, and the first-ever political ad created in 1912 by the Democratic Party. The very first president who's captured on film is William McKinley, so we have uh, film of McKinley during the time of the Spanish-American War, a, a conflict, uh, incidentally, that was covered by several motion picture producers, sometimes recreating uh, scenes of the Spanish-American War in New Jersey. Now, of course, after McKinley dies, then Theodore Roosevelt, very young, becomes the new president of the United States. And Roosevelt is a fascinating figure, uh, especially for uh, us here in the moving image section, because he was an astonishingly well chronicled president. There is a lot of film on Theodore Roosevelt. And the reason why is because he died in 1919. After that, a Roosevelt Memorial Association was established that was devoted to collecting as much information about Theodore Roosevelt as possible. So they went out and asked a lot of people, a lot of film producers among others, if they would donate material relating to Theodore Roosevelt to the Memorial Association. And they gathered up nearly 500 films from various producers, a lot of newsreel producers, for example. He is one of those magnetic figures that, you know, whenever you see him, even on this old film, your eye is just, just drawn to him. And we have some films of him campaigning for the presidency in 1912, and these are actually very nice films of him campaigning on the back of train platforms and you know you just you really wish that you you could hear him now we have recordings of Roosevelt from 1912 he actually cut a few records of speeches uh, that could be distributed to supporters so we do have Roosevelt's voice as well which is surprisingly high and squeaky uh, which is not something you might expect from seeing him on film we stand for a living wage Wages are subnormal if they fail to provide a living for those who devote their time and energy to industrial occupation. The monetary equivalent of a living wage varies according to local conditions, but must include enough to secure the elements of a normal standard of living, a standard high enough to make morality possible, to provide for education and recreation, to care for immature members of the family, to maintain the family during periods of sickness, and to permit a reasonable saving for old age. I do think that Roosevelt was, was very aware of his image, and he cultivated a particular image uh, of being a, a strong, robust, can-do you know, kind of guy, uh, and I, that's one reason why he cooperated uh, with people who wanted to take movies of him so much, and, you know, and I'm grateful for that as a historian. Uh, that we have all of these films that we can uh, that we can use to study uh, Theodore Roosevelt's life. I wish more uh, presidents after that had been a little bit more camera friendly. I mean, there's just there's not very much footage of William Howard Taft. Ironically, the first color footage we have of a president is from William Howard Taft. So we have that in our collection. There were a lot of experiments taking place in color, uh, motion picture photography uh, at the time. And this was a very, uh, Taft was captured in a very early color process. 